Hi friends, it's me, Magdalene, and I hope you're doing well. If you're new, I am a final year uni student from New Zealand studying computer science and entrepreneurship. On my channel, I make videos about uni, career, tech, entrepreneurship, and also personal growth. So today's video will be all about resumes. I'll be covering some tips on how to write a good resume and also walk you through an example. Now this video is specifically about creating a resume for technical roles, but most of the advice also applies to general roles. Lastly, there are a whole bunch of resources on the internet about how to write a good resume. So in the descriptions, I've included a bunch of links to my selection of the best resources. The first step is to make sure that your resume is no longer than two pages. Recruiters only look at each resume for a few seconds, so it's important that the key details are clear and concise. I think in the US, the one-page rule is quite strict, but in New Zealand, recruiters are generally more lenient, so two pages is also alright. Tip number two is to tailor your resume to each job. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is sending the same resume to every single job. Now you can imagine how different the job description would be like for, let's say, a technical consultant and a software engineer, right? So one way that you can tailor your resume is by using the same keywords from the job description in your resume. An example is, if the job description says that this role uses a tech stack that includes React, Express, and SQL, then make sure these skills are highlighted in your skills section and you also showcase projects which use the same tech stack. Another way that you can tailor your resume is by designing your resume using the same design style as the company that you're applying for. Here are some examples. Tip number three is to be quantitative and specific. A good way to hook the recruiter is by using metrics in your resume. So show what you did, how you did it, and the impact that it created with some quantitative figures. In the walkthrough later on, I'll be showing you some examples of what I mean. Also, in the descriptions, one of the resources that I linked actually explains this very well and shows you some good and bad examples. Tip number four is to diversify your examples. Try to showcase your skills in a variety of areas such as leadership, community work, and being a team member. For example, if you already mentioned that you were the leader of a club, there isn't really a need to also mention that you were the class rep because they both demonstrate leadership. I know it's quite painful sometimes to not list down every single thing that you did, especially when, you know, sometimes as students, we do things just for the resume, but it's even more painful when we don't get the job. The last three tips are quite obvious. Tip number five is to make sure that your resume is structured and has good formatting. So make sure you have clear titles and bullet points and that all the spacing, fonts and font sizes are consistent. Tip number six is to make sure that there's no spelling mistakes because spelling mistakes are a huge turn off and can also show that you are quite a careless person. And lastly, make sure that your CV is up to date so that it has all the relevant information that the recruiter needs to know. Okay, dokes, so now this is the fun part. Let's walk through an example. So as you can see, I have created this extremely cute character called Teddy Bear and <laughs> I possibly had a little bit too much fun. But anyway, let's go and dissect her resume. So what are the main sections that we have of a resume? We've got the context section, we've got the education, skills, work experience, personal projects, and extracurriculars. You can have other sections like awards and hobbies, but just make sure that um, they are adding to your resume and not just cluttering this space because, you know, if you want to keep it within the one page or two page limit, you do have to be quite selective with what you show. Okay, so first up, we have the contact section. We list out the phone, email, LinkedIn, GitHub, and website. You can also put where you are based. I personally wouldn't recommend putting your actual house address because that's quite dangerous. And another thing that you can put is your residency status because unfortunately, if you have a foreign name, like for example, if I put Magdalene Huang, Huang is obviously not a Kiwi last name, right? Sometimes it can be discriminated against because it might be implied that you might need visa sponsorship or whatever. So yeah, it's it's good to put your residency status sometimes. Next up, we have the education. 
Some people say to put the education section at the end, but in my opinion, I like to have it at the front because it gives the recruiter a quick overview of you. It shows you we're usually based because you would usually be based in the same area as your university. Shows what you are studying when you're graduating and your cumulative GPA. Now, I would say you can put your GPA if it is seven and above, although eight and above is preferred. Yeah, but really it's up to you if you want to put your GPA. And then it's also good to put when you're graduating because then the recruiter knows what to expect. And then we have skills. Okay, so usually for technical resumes, you can separate your skills into languages, frameworks, slash libraries, and technologies. You can also organize them by like front end, back end, and technologies. So it's really up to you. Here I've listed everything as one line, but another good way to do it would be to actually have the skills as bullet points. So this way it's much clearer. One caveat though is that this can take up a lot of space, so you'll need to work around that. You can see that in my frameworks, I try to put a variety, so I put try to put both front end, back end, and also design tools like Figma. And then now we have work experience. So I limited Teddy's experience to just three. We can see founder of Teddy Blocks, software engineer intern at Teddy Clouds, and computer science lab demonstrator at the University of Teddyland. For founder of Teddy Blocks, we we've got this first sentence that explains what exactly the heck Teddy Blocks is. So Teddy Blocks is an edutech platform which teaches kids STEAM via interactive blocks. You can see that I'm also being specific with the metrics. So I said that the current user base is a size of 100 and then the award um, they were selected out of 1000 plus entries so all these numbers help to really solidify the examples and then for the software engineering one again team of four 32 end users increased their returns by 5000 percent I know that's ridiculous but you know and then the tech stack here I have listed the tech stack um, again, just in one line, but potentially a better way to do this could be to actually create a sentence out of it. So um, here you can say like maybe it designed mockups on Figma, used JavaScript and React.js on the front end, used Express and SQL on the back end, deployed on Heroku. So this shows that you actually know what each of these technologies do and you're not just listing them as one blob on a line. And then lastly, we have the computer science lab demonstrator one. Um, again, you know, being specific with what exactly you did in the role, quantifying it, showing the impact that you created. Yeah, and I've even included a student quote to these senpai as the goat. This is optional, but and try, try to make it more appropriate. Next up, we have personal projects. So I've included grandpa's to-do list and then the COVID-19 teddy bear hunt. If you're in New Zealand, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say the teddy bear hunt. So for grandpa's to-do list, basically just a quick description of what this app was actually about. And then you could even include things like this, regularly tested the app with grandpa because this shows that you had a focus on actually addressing the pain points of the user and you did it in a test-driven development. And for this one, you can say that you collaborated with a friend in lockdown, so collaboration shows teamwork. Lockdown shows that you, I mean, you were committed to learning even while you were in lockdown. And then extracurriculars, again, try to be selective. So here you can see this demonstrates leadership, right? And then my Teddy Community Award shows service, shows that I'm volunteering. No, shows that Teddy, not me, is is volunteering to her community. Um, yep, again, shows initiative here because you created the, the social media page. And then here again, quantify the impact. And then Teddy Community Award, again, you show exactly how much input you did and what exactly you did for this award. So Teddy helped to design a curriculum and then uh, she also helped to set up the work from home and set up for the seniors. So yeah, this is my walkthrough of an example resume. There are areas that can be improved, such as, you know, these bullet points. They are specific and they are quantitative, but you can be more specific and more quantitative than that. So one of the resources that I linked in the descriptions, um, it's written by Sukans. 
he has some great examples of what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And obviously here, um, I made up this whole resume, so there's a limit to my imagination. So I, I couldn't really go that specific. So yeah, you can you can find this example resume in the descriptions. It's just under my Notion homepage as well. So those are all my tips on how to write a good technical resume. If they were helpful, then please like, comment, and subscribe because it really helps. If you have any questions or tips of your own, then feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you have any video ideas for me, then please leave them in the Google form in the descriptions below. All the best with your applications and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!